My name is Brian Moten. I'm the minister of the Church of Christ in Goose Creek, South Carolina, and this is your last Sunday sermon synopsis. Yet once and again, we just had a marvelous time in worship service, and we studied a passage of scripture in your Bible in 2 Kings, the chapter 6, verse 1 through verse number 7. At this place in the scripture, we see that the sons of the prophets were staying with the man of God by the name of Elisha. In biblical days, the students would stay with their master. Where well, there came an occasion where the students went to their master and they say that the place where we are staying is too small for all of us. And so they asked for liberty. They asked that they might go to the Jordan and cut down some trees and there build a suitable uh, dwelling for them all. Elijah granted them permission and then they asked Elijah to come along with them. When we get to verse number five, six, and seven, this is the thrust of the message. In verse number five, we find a very interesting event that takes place. As they are cutting down the beams to build this larger dwelling, the axe head of one of the students falls into the river. And, uh, and because it falls into the river and he cannot get it where it fell, he cries out to the man of God and he says that the axe head had fallen in and on top of that, I borrowed the axe head. And so there was a sense of urgency for recovering that which was lost, that which had fallen. And so the man of God asked him, where did it fall? And he pointed to the area. The man of God throws in a branch. He throws in a stick. And then he causes the axe head to float above the water. And as it floated above the water, then the man of God said, pick it up for yourself. I use for a subject on this morning's lesson, God will not do for you what you can do for yourself. If you are looking for a job, you've got to go get it. If you are interested in a particular career and you need a degree, you've got to go get it. You see, God can open doors for us. God can guide us. But there are some things you're going to have to do for yourself. The reason I use the subject, God will not do for you, what you can do for yourself is because salvation has been brought down, but you've got to pick it up. There's some things you've got to pick up for yourself. When you think about the mistakes that we made and trying to make it right with God, trying and striving to become a Christian, in the book of Psalms, the chapter 69, verse 1 through 3, David talks about falling in the waters, if you will. David says in verse number one of Psalm 69, save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. He said, I sink deep in Maya, where there is no standing. He said, I've come into deep water. Have you ever gotten into some trouble with sin? Sin will take you further than you intended on going and keep you longer than you intended on staying. It's important that we understand what Meyer is. When David says, I sink deep into the Meyer. Meyer is muddy soil. Meyer is slimy slush. It's swamp. It is deep mud, if you will. Meyer is representative of sin. And we all have fallen into sin. The Bible lets us know in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin does not lift us up, but sin brings us down. All have fallen short, just like the axe head fell into the, into the river, into the mire. All have fallen short. And God has sent his son to lift us up. In Zechariah chapter 6 and verse number 12, the Bible lets us know that Jesus is the branch. When I think about a stick being thrown into the water, I think about Christ Jesus coming down from heaven and dying on Calvary's cross that he might lift us up. But in order to lift us up, there's some things we're going to have to do for ourselves. I'll give you an example of this in Jonah, the chapter is one. In the book of Jonah, Jonah was a man of God and God told him to go to the city of Nineveh, but he goes into the, uh, pays a fare and goes to a place called Tarshish. Well, while they're sailing on the boat, headed to Tarshish, God causes a deep tempest wind to arise. And as the tempest wind arises, the men on the boat, along with Jonah, were fearing for their lives. And they were 
were all calling out to their particular God. And then they looked for Jonah because he boarded the ship with them. And he found out that Jonah was asleep. And so they woke Jonah up and they said, what is this you're doing? You, 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 how is it that you can sleep like this? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What kind of people do you have? Make a long story short, Jonah lets them know that he was running from the Lord. And as a result of his running from the Lord, instead of doing the will of God, God calls this tempest wind that was threatening all of their lives. Jonah says in verse number, uh, you need to read verse 11 through verse number 13, but uh, he tells them that they need to pick him up and throw him over the boat in order to save their lives. Well, the men were resistant to this, and as a result, they continued to row. But no matter how much they rowed, their situation got worse and worse, and they finally resolved that if we're going to save our lives, we must pick him up and cast him overboard. Have you ever wondered why Jonah didn't throw himself over the water, overboard? Because God will not do for you what you can do for yourself. And until you are willing to get rid of your sin, until you're willing to sacrifice that thing that is keeping you from salvation, your life will be like that storm. Why don't you become a child of God by obeying the gospel, by hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized for the remission of our sins? Visit the Church of Christ in Goose Creek, South Carolina. We're at 539 Old Monk's Corner Road. Visit us on the web at www.goosecreekchurchofchrist.com. We'd be delighted to meet you. May God ever bless you.